Okay, hello, this is Bob Jackson. I'm here with you um, with the SE202 class uh, for St. Mary of the Woods College for the eight week course. And this is week three, where I'm going to show you how to start populating your Moodle courses uh, with your science curriculum on it. Uh, how you're going to start putting some actual lessons and activities and resources for students into it. Now then, one thing I'll say from the start, what I'm going to show you now, uh, is not going to be due next, it's not going to be due a week from now, it's going to be due two weeks from now, because I'm going to have you do uh, each one of the modules that we've gone through so far in content, so that's chapters 14 to 18, and I want you to put resources in for all of them, so I'm just going to say right now that this assignment is going to be across two weeks and give you two weeks of time to get it done because I realize it'll be a little bit of work in doing it. And there's a little bit, maybe a little bit of a learning curve, learning to use Moodle, but really it's, it's gotten where it's pretty easy because you can drag and drop a lot of things on the course or just add in links. Um, but now then to, to kind of talk and, and tell you the overall purpose of this, uh, when you're going in, when you're gonna become a teacher here in a year or two, and some of you are already in the classroom, I do believe, and already seeing that uh, L using LMS is, is becoming highly important today. Okay, not only because of the pandemic, it's just become an expectation. And where it really helps at the elementary level is you can take your lessons online for parents to work with their kids at home. And uh, it opens your classroom up. Uh, it, uh, it enables a lot more accountability uh, and showing that you're doing you're doing your job of teaching. And another thing that it, it, it adds to it, and that's what I really want you to do with what I'm showing you on this, is you you give students multiple uh, multiple resources for learning rather than it just being you. Uh, students, they, this can be for, you can put stuff in for different learning styles for students, uh, for your slower students, for your uh, your um, higher level students that just kind of excel um, to visual learning. You can you can put things into into a course for your visual learners, for your auditory learners. Um, it just opens it up that you can um, give them so much and like just listen to you in the classroom, they can't play you back. But if you put video lessons onto your course, and I'm going to be asking you to do at least one in each model of, of your cell, uh, they can play you back. And the parents can play, play it. And then see what you really intended to be doing with the students on the given lessons. And then they can more effectively work with the students. Because a lot of times, as you well know, there's a... Um, pretty good disconnect between what you want than to be achieving in your classroom and what they do at home or their parents are telling them. To even parents tell them, oh, that's stupid. We never did math like that or we never did whatever subject like that. So uh, realize and approach this as though you are providing multiple resources for your students on each content area. Now then, I'm just giving you science. If you decide you want to use this more and either make you another course or, or whatever on PRISM, you can do it and build resources for math in each of the other content areas. Um, I highly, I mean, the, the more ahead of the game you are and getting you some resources built for teaching, the easier it's going to be when you hit the classroom. Okay, so let's get started and I'll show you the actual assignment, if you will go to um, D2L and go to our course and go to week three, and then week three, when you get on week three, you see at the top, like you usually do, I give a rundown of the assignments for this week in which you have your, you have my PowerPoint and the video lesson on that, which you may have already done. And then you come down here to the fifth one, where it says you will populate modules of your elementary science curriculum course this week, and you'll need to watch this video, blah, 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 what you're doing right now. 
Okay. And I tell you, you have two full weeks to do this, but you're going to be populating everything we've done so far. Okay. And putting K through 12 appropriate materials on a course, like the ones of you that had me in 201, what you did in your digital notebooks. We're just making it a course. Okay. And it's just giving you hopefully a different learning opportunity and uh, giving you something different. Uh, and actually it's, it's much broader and uh, use more useful wide scale. Okay. So, uh, oh, I want to change that. And don't pay attention to that 50 right there. By the time you look at it again, that's going to be a hundred points. Since I'm having you go across two weeks and there's so much more content than usual, I'm going to make it worth a hundred points. Okay. Uh, so down here is what you're doing. Okay. You're adding the resource to your course. Okay. Now then you have, you have the different modules on your course, which we'll see when we get back on moving. Okay. In which you have uh, earth science module, weather and climate, earth's waters and, and the water cycle. Those are the content modules. And then you have the getting started module. We're going to put one piece into the getting started module uh, for now. We'll come back to the rest of it um, probably after Thanksgiving. Okay. Um, because I think the most important thing is start getting content built into your course. Okay, now then, in each module, you have these subheadings. Okay, you have slideshows and video lessons. You have assignments, lab activities and simulations, and games and activities. Okay, now then, you're going to put resources into each one of these categories. Okay, and I'm telling you here how many and of what to put into these. Now then, this is minimum. You can put more, okay? Because uh, you realize you're building this for yourself and you'll teach it in the future. And if you've already been in the classroom and know things you kind of teach, you may even use some resources you already use, okay? So like in the first section, uh, in, in each module, in, each, in, in the earth, earth science and the weather and climate and the earth's waters, you want to put one slideshow or PowerPoint or Google Slides, whichever you want to use. So that's actually three that you're going to build. Okay, now they don't have to be, so don't give me no 30, 30 slide. That's crazy. I can't see any of them being over six, seven, or eight slides or so. Okay, and this is elementary school, attention span of elementary students, but they, they should not be long slideshows, but they should have good content on them within the given areas, earth science, weather and climate, and so forth. Now you can do those the format you want. You can do PowerPoint or you can do Google Slides, which most of that's what most of you'll do. There are some other slide share type programs out there, but you can use whichever you want. Now, if it's PowerPoint, you're gonna be able to drag and drop around right into the course. If it's Google Slides, you're gonna have to copy and paste a link for them and make sure that you, that you share that link with all that have the link. Okay, on Google Slides. If you have a problem with that, you can let me know or don't know how to do it, let me know. Okay, but when you make your Google Slides, you can go to the option sharing and there'll be an option there for you to choose that um, says uh, share with anyone that has the link because you're going to put the link on Moodle. Okay, so if they click on the link, then it'll take them to your Google Slides. Okay, you will make one self-made video lesson for each module. It does not have to be super long, okay? It just, I just want a short lesson, okay? Uh, a TikTok lesson will do for now. I want you to, I want to complete in whatever you're teaching, but a three to five minute or whatever lesson will do. I just want you getting used to using, doing a video lesson, okay? Because I think you're going to have to do it more through time. Okay, uh, at least most are saying that. Okay, um, but you can use Zoom. If you use Zoom, probably what you're gonna do, Zoom's easy because you can just do Zoom on your computer, most of you have it. And then I would take that Zoom, if you go to YouTube, you can just drag and drop your video that you save on your computer onto add a video on YouTube and then share a link easily from YouTube and everyone can actually access YouTube so easy, okay? That'll be up to you. You can go right to YouTube and make the video, okay? And then share the link, 
but you can also use TikTok. I think TikTok's cool. I think there, there's a lot of good, there's a lot of good stuff. There's bad stuff with TikTok, but there's a lot of good going on with TikTok education wise. I see it all the way in the high schools, all the way in the AP courses where they give them quick, quick studies, quick reviews on those TikToks that they um, post. Okay. And then um, I want some video lessons from any source, source that you choose, which you did on, if you had me in class before, um, you did it on your uh, digital notebooks. But you can go to like Make Me Genius, Crash Course, Bozeman Science. Uh, I mean, there's something, there's all kinds of them. USG, since you're in um, Earth, Earth Sciences, USGS is a really good resource, and NASA. NASA has some really good videos and stuff. Okay. So I want one to two of those in the slideshows, video lesson sections of each of the courses or each of the modules. Okay. Under assignments, I just want you to put two assignments in each. Okay, this is the actual lessons that you do for a grade. Um, and, and I'm going to show you how to put these on the course. Uh, I want at least two in each module, two in earth science, two in uh, weather and climate, two in earth's waters. Okay, then lab activities. I want at least one hands-on that you do in class. Okay, like doing a water cycle one. Okay, uh, doing a, um, if you look on the earthquake ones, there's a good Oreo cookie one that you can do that are hands-on. Okay, and then at least one online simulation where that's simulating an earthquake taking place or earthquake engineering and buildings and bridges. There's some really good simulation on that where they have shake tables and stuff. Okay, and then at least two games or actively engaging activities are more game-like than anything. And this is where you do your Kahoots, Edpuzzle, uh, Quizlet, and those types of things, uh, where you've got some sort of interactive and fun type of thing going on with kids, okay? So right here, this is a list you wanna to come to to see these are the minimums. You can add more, more can be better. I wouldn't make it huge, realize, uh, you make your course, because the idea is you're going to make this course that you share it with parents, you give parents access as so their student uh, and on their, on their student account. And uh, you don't want your course with too, too many resources for them to have to hunt through. You want to be able to find them. Okay. Um, and I can show you some ways later that you can mark because you can put like emojis and stuff on the assignments to tell them how they can go find the assignments real quick on the course. Okay, so that's the main instructions. Okay, now let's go to Moodle. And I'll start showing you how to do the stuff. Okay, so first I want you to go to get started. And I want each and every one of you to do this. You're going to, all we're going to put in this for now, because you can't really know your syllabus and, and that and, until later. And then rules and policies, I don't know. I'm telling you, it should be here. But you're really not going to be able to put your rules and policies I would do that when you get to a school and you have a um, student handbook and it should be electronic and you can put it right here. And then if you make up a lab, if the school has lab safety guidelines, then you can put those in right here too. But what we can put are Indiana academic science standards. So you go to the top of your course, anytime you go working with you, you go to turn editing on, okay, in the top right hand corner, okay. Um, I guess never was send me. Oh well. Um, okay, but you turn editing on, and then that's when you start doing stuff. So I want to add Indiana Academic Science Standards. Standards. So I'm going to go add activity, and then I'm going to go to URL. Okay. Now then, then that's where I go. Um, I'm in tab. I go to Indiana Academic Science Standards. Okay. And I'm sure you guys are getting to know where this stuff is. Okay. And then you're going to come here. And if you do know a great W on teaching, just put it. If you don't know, you can add them all. Okay. But what you'll do is you will get drill into the actual 
standard. I'm going to grade five right here. I go, I'm going to click on the PDF. You want the PDF version. It opens up and looks better for all to read. Okay. And then you're going to copy the URL. And then you're going to put that here. Now, then if you want to, you can download them all and you can put them, you can put them in here and then have them all together. Okay. Um, no, actually, there's better. You put them in a folder. The best thing for you to do would be download them all, put them in a folder, then you can drag and drop the whole folder onto your course. Okay. And I'll show you how you drag files over. Uh, if you want it all up for all of them, you just download uh, for grade five, grade four, three, two, one, so forth, and uh, put them in a folder, in, in a file folder on your computer, and then you can just drag and drop those over onto your course. Okay, but if you're just doing one grade, most people end up teaching one grade level. Then you go Indiana, academic, science, standards, and this one I almost said was fifth grade. Okay, now then, if you're going to make one grade, now if you're going to put resources for multiple grades on your course, that's where I want you to stay consistent when you build your course. If you're going fifth grade, you keep all your resources at fifth grade. If you're going fourth grade, you can stay at whatever grade level you want. Just keep them. All your resources, don't, don't mix them all up. So since I did this, I would be um, trying to stick everything on my course to fifth grade. Okay, so now then, you don't have to worry about any of the rest of that. Well, wait, I'm sorry. I'd go to appearance and always pick... Um, uh, new window. It just looks better. Okay. And then go save and return to course. And there it is. Okay. Now it's on here. Now, then what I do to give it a better appearance on the course, I go to here, edit, move right. And then it makes this look like an outline. So my subheading up here is to the left. And this is underneath that subheading. Okay. So now that one's done. Okay, now I'm gonna close that section. I'm gonna go to Earth Science. And this is where I'm gonna start putting things in. Okay, now then, for slideshows and video lessons. Okay, if I'm going to go with a slideshow, you control my mouse here. Okay. Uh, then I would, Go to my files on my computer, and I'm sorry, I'm looking through my uh, computer for an appropriate file. Okay, now then, I am on. Okay, I'll show you here. I'm just in. I'm just in here, and what about on chapter 18? I want okay, chapter 14. Okay, now then, what I'm going to do? I'm going to grab this file. Okay, I'm going to grab this file here, and I'm gonna, okay, I'm gonna grab the file off of from my computer and I'm gonna drag it right over here onto the course and it will populate. Now then, the only thing that it does is when it populates, it always drops to the bottom of the section. Then you will have to drag it up to where it goes. Okay, now according to what network you're on, it can take several minutes for it to come in. Then you drag it up and you put it underneath the section that you want. Okay. Now then, I wanted this under slideshow. So this is a PowerPoint for chapter 14. Okay. I go edit, I go move right and I have it underneath there. Okay. Now then, I want another one for chapter 15. So I'm going to take chapter 15 over here. I'm going to put it on the course. Remember, it goes down here at the bottom, and I move it out. Okay? So now then I put two PowerPoints on here, doggone it, and talking to it at the same time. Okay, now then, And I keep moving them over just to give it a good look. Okay, and it looks like an outline, and these are underneath there. Okay, so that's PowerPoint. I'm saying you only have to put one PowerPoint. I put two here. Okay, any PDFs, any PowerPoints, any Word documents, assignments you're giving students, if they're on a PDF or Word document, you just drag and drop them on the course, it's that easy. 
The hardest part is coming up when you find out what you want to use. Okay, video lessons. Okay, so if I go to video lessons on, I'll go to Just find one. Okay, here's a plate tectonics one. Okay, so I go to my YouTube video. Okay, make sure you do go to YouTube rather than on. Sorry. Go to, if they're on YouTube, actually go to YouTube, not like that and was on another platform. Uh, make sure you go to YouTube, go to the share feature, and you're going to copy the share. Okay, the embed code. You go back to your course, and then this is where you come down here to add an activity or resource in the section. You go to URL, you know, add that there, and go paste. And then you get the title of it. You can either type it in yourself, or what I do is I go on to it, that page, and I just copy it, and I paste it. And I have it in there. And I go make then I I always tag mine if you'll notice on mine, my, my resource I'm getting it from because then that kind of lets even whoever's viewing where I always get my resources that are the better ones. That's just a tag that I put on them. So like if it was from NASA, then I put NASA. If it was from Bozeman Science, I put Bozeman Science right there. Just to for me and also anyone else using. Then I always pick new window down here and then go save and return. And then I have that one on there. So that's a video lesson. Okay, now then it will be the same procedure for putting in simulations. Like when you get to doing your lab activities, it's gonna be the very same thing. Okay, so if I was doing a, uh, uh, let me see, I'll just go to PET. Let's see where we got an earth science. Bad. Okay, greenhouse gravity. Hmm. So a really good bets for science force. I thought there was an earthquake one. There's not. Um, okay, so let's say you made a Kahoot. Okay. Yes, you. Anyway, if you make, I thought I had some coots on here. I don't. Um, oh, no, I didn't accept all cookies. So if you do. If you do a Kahoot, okay, and I'm I'm just grabbing one. I see. Can't remember where their search. Not quite appropriate. Yeah. I'll just go here for now. Okay, so if I go to one of these resources, okay, here we go, rocks and minerals. Okay, and I go to this, then I can get the URL up here. 
and then put it in for my URL. And that was rocks and minerals. I wouldn't uh, copy this, and I'm not sure whether this is a grade level or not. And then you're just going to take what I'm doing, uh, and you'll want to look at it. And uh, this was a Kahoot. Okay. And then appearance, new window, and save and return. And I drag it and I put it up here. I said that was a Kahoot, so I'm putting it in games and activities. Okay, and I move it right. Okay. And that's it. I mean, basically, you're putting URLs or you're dragging and dropping your different things in. Okay, so you'll go assignments. Assignments will probably be PDFs or Word documents, so you can drag and drop them right on the course. Now, some of them, if you drag and drop it on, the file name, you will probably want to change. So on any of these, when you put them on, if you just click on them, then it will. Okay. 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 The URLs don't let you do that. If, if, it's a, if it's a Word document, PDF, or whatever, you just click on them, then you can go to them and uh, change the file names. But, it, oh, it can be easier than that. You can just click here. You change the file name right there. Okay. Yeah. They've upgraded that. So you don't have to go actually into your file. You can go here, click on that, and you can change the name of the file. So sometimes your file names will be kind of goofy, particularly when you get students and parents are looking at them. So you can change your file names there. Okay. And anyway, that's what you'll do. And, and you go down through quizzes and tests. We'll do next go round. Okay. Uh, over the next couple of weeks after this assignment. But I think that'll be enough work for you to uh, get uh, populated down through. Don't worry about lesson plans right now because we can't really do lesson plans because you don't have your stuff in your course yet to know what you're lesson planning about. Okay, and then same way with quizzes and tests. But I, I'm gonna try to have you make up a few quizzes and tests later on in this term. But just complete your course down through Earth's waters and the water cycle done just like this. And I think I've showed you enough. If you need more help, then just contact me, okay? And you can you can even call me if you need to. My phone number's on D2L. I, you could be on the site and I could talk you through it. So that's a wrap. Let me know if you need help and have, have a great time doing this. Have some fun doing it. Make it, put some interesting stuff on your courses. Thank you.